Now, have you ever played any of the Animal Crossing games? The cool little relaxing titles very much on every damn Nintendo console nowadays. Now, you know I'm not a Nintendo fan necessarily. Well, I am, but only to a certain degree. I'm clearly... Sega! As you'd obviously know. But yes, that's right. You can actually play some Animal Crossing games on... Yeah, by the way, this obviously clearly is not a real Game Boy. And also on the Dreamcast via the GB Auto port. That's right, some of these titles, they're Animal Crossing titles, obviously done by independent developers, a lot of them are just kind of, you know, little projects to see if they actually could be done, but they, they're they very, very interesting, they've got some cool little quirks to them, and they're clearly Animal Crossing. Let's take a look. So this is it, first up, we've got Game Boy Crossing. Yes, that's right, Game Boy Crossing for, for the Game Boy and can also work on the Sega Dreamcast or basically anything that can really emulate the Game Boy. Yes, this is it, Game Boy Crossing. Now, as you can see, you are essentially a townsperson and yes, there are animals on an island. And yes, that's right, you are going to fish, you're going to catch bugs and you're going to build. So yes, clearly, by no means, this is not Animal Crossing. Now yes, you can clearly see also though, that the main character that you first reach could very much look a bit like this guy. I mean, I'm pretty sure that was clearly meant to be Tom Nook, but as you can see, like I said, the elements are all here that Animal Crossing has, aka fishing, catching bugs, and also digging up treasure. But yes, as always, you've basically got to do exactly what your slave, aka Tom Nook, tells you what you've got to do. And basically, you've got to do what he says, and then you'll be able to build a house. <sighs> yeah. Tom Nook really is a real son of a... <laughs> but hey, maybe on selling his business practices a bit upstream, when, let's face it, he became a billionaire the way he's done it, right? Basically ripping off the Animal Crossing universe. So yeah, as you can see, this one is pretty in-depth and does offer more than actually a lot of the other Animal Crossing rip-offs for the Game Boy and Dreamcast. So yeah, Game Boy Crossing, although a rip-off, still pretty cool and although very, very limited. Now the controls really are D-pad and a couple buttons, there's really not much to it. But hey, it's nice looking. And I did quite enjoy this one. Now this one unfortunately has absolutely zero sound, but feels like this one is actually a little bit more closer to what Animal Crossing is meant to represent. AKA loads of different nods to the Animal Crossing universe, including that is clearly KK himself. You cannot deny that is clearly KK. He actually takes you through the beginning of the story, AKA your journey in on the train, like you know, the Wii version, for example, of Animal Crossing, that happens at the beginning, that happens in this version as well. And in fact, to be fair, it even happens on the GameCube version, it might even happen on some other versions, but they're the two that I'm certainly <laughs> pretty damn sure about, aka GameCube version and Wii version, you do travel in on a train. And that's right, he basically, he has a bit of small talk with you. Another cool thing is there is a lot more customization, including being able to put your actual name and also being able to name the town as well. Obviously, this wasn't in the previous game we just looked at, so this already kind of has a bit of one-upsmanship on it. Yes, the big issue being is it has no sound, but it does feel a little bit more complete. And what I mean by that is it just feels like there was stuff already in place to essentially develop a pond. Like I said, there's some great nods already to Animal Crossing and the characters within it. And clearly, I also think the landscape looks a little bit more how you'd expect Animal Crossing to be, to the point where you can even see inside of a building the way it looks. Yes, you can't move anything around, but it certainly feels like it was a bit more complete than the previous one. And this is another one that just 
calls itself Animal Crossing. Now, yes, again, it looks a little bit like the first one, although you can actually move furniture around on this one. That's right, you can push it, but that's literally about it. The other thing is, yes, you also can get a fishing rod, you can also catch fish, you can also shake trees, you can also catch, that's right, butterflies. So yeah, there's a few different things here. And like I said, I think this character almost looks a little bit like Marshall. Does it look like Marshall to you? I'm pretty sure it does to me. And also, there is also the owl as well. The one also looking after the museum. So hey, there's a few different characters here that almost make it feel that close to being a copyright claim. But as you can see, they all do offer something slightly different. It feels like some are more complete than others. That's clearly the case. But hey, you can't deny, they're all pretty decent looking projects. At the end of the day, yes, these could never actually be released because let's face it, Nintendo pretty much shut down anything that isn't done by themselves or a sort of pre-approved third party. Unfortunately, that's now how really Nintendo really are, unfortunately. But hey, it's nice to see these anyway, even in the states that they're in, working on the Sega Dreamcast. <sighs> Love it. Like, comment and subscribe, I'll see you all soon.